leather gloves We're slapping in hands Popcorn and peanuts We'll work in the stands Pink cotton candy Love on a stick He's chasing the beer The trick of the lips Play ball Play ball Blow with the bases And smack it right over the wall Play ball Take off the caps Time for the song Red, ripe, and blue Y'all sing along. Good evening and welcome to Laughter Saves Lives. Live! I'm John Santo, my co host for the evening. Pat Marone. Social media, Frank Fiala. And the incredibly handsome Steve Oliva. And In the, the third time. wheel spot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And, and the, on time. Uh, yeah, you're not fashionably late tonight. That's oh, right, we got him here you. on time. Good yeah. for you, Stevie, baby. Tonight's show is sponsored by Life Vac and Famous Visions. We'll have commercials later. Sure. Whatever right. you want, yeah. So uh, we have uh, a couple of things going on. Let's first talk about our week. Frank, how was your week? I had, a, I had an excellent week. I, um, uh, some exciting news. I got um, cast as a lead in an uh, episode of an upcoming TV show. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to say any more than that. But okay. I do want to thank John LaRocchia because um, he read the lines with me when I uh, had to film the audition tape. So, uh, so I thank him because... Uh, so it's definitely a B show? It's, uh, it's, it's it, it is a B show. Yes. And... Uh, but other than that, the week has been good. What's great is that he can't say anything about it. That means it's a big deal. Yes. Yeah, this is, yeah. Yeah, or I'm just making it a big deal and pretend that I can't say anything about it. I think, think I'm leaning towards, I think I'm leaning towards that. It's all perception. But congratulations anyway. <laughs> Thank you. You yeah, deserve it. You. You're working hard. You do that acting class and everything. You, I do. It uh, seems to be paying off. It's paying off for you, but it's not paying off for Tugboat. I heard he's in the class <laughs> yeah, too. Manny, yeah, so. Manny's <laughs> in the class as well. Uh, but Manny's working hard and... Uh, Oh yeah, he's always he's always out there working, pounding the pavement. He's terrific. He's terrific. He's terrific. Steve, how about your week? Oh, well, my week, I went to uh, well this weekend. I went to uh, Nassau Coliseum to see my buddy uh, Tommy Rainoni box on a big card. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, well, unfortunately, every time he hit the guy, I got a spray of sweat on my seventy-five dollar pretzel, so I wasn't too happy. Seventy-five dollars for pretzel. Ah, uh, listen, nice, beautiful place, Nassau Coliseum, but uh, a little lofty on the prices. Fortunately, I was able to buy a fifty-dollar uh, paper towel from the bathroom attendant. So, uh, yeah, this... they're, they're making money, the people, uh, Nassau Coliseum. Very nice, very nice place, though. Yeah. So. I heard it's really not that great over there. It's I don't like know. No, like I have nothing to compare it to. I mean, I, you know. I go to OTB, Knights of Columbus. It's a beautiful place compared to <laughs> well, those uh, joints, you know. Pal, how about your week? Anything big? Uh, it was all right, but today I had a, a cooking demo. I do cooking Italian for seniors with my job. Today I had a, a little odd senior, scene at the cooking demo. Uh, the new We have a new uh, community relations uh, director. She comes on with me to the demo, and she's supposed to speak a little bit about the Regency and stuff. And the uh, other the seniors that were supposed to come out there were uh, were a little late. So she decides to go out and start recruiting people inside the senior center. It was the Great Neck Senior Center. And she comes in there with all these Chinese people. I see them coming. It was like almost like they were getting ready to go to work, you know, when they come out of the van. They just yeah, came yeah. around. We had about 25, 30 Chinese people in there. And the director of the place says, how are you going to do this? You, this is not good. They, they don't speak English. So None of them? None of no them. They don't speak English. So now I have to teach them how to make cannolis in Chinese. No, but I didn't do it in Chinese. So I went up there, and I told them, I said, listen, today we're making cannolis. It's, uh, it's an Italian egg roll. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Nice, so, nice <laughs> reference. Yeah, nice reference. No, but I didn't know what to say. But anyway, so now I got these women. I said, look up my video on YouTube so you can get all the stuff. And uh, so uh, long story short... The woman's coming up, one of the Chinese people, we'll, we'll get the call in a minute. We'll get the call in a second. One it's of the Chinese John. people, were, um, they start taking pictures of all my ingredients. I said, what is this, a crime scene here? They're taking pictures. But it was a funny experience. What Never you, had it happen before. They what just were passing through. Was it a tour bus or something? No, they were part of the senior center. 
Oh, they hung up. They hung okay. up? Okay. Why didn't you call me? I'm fluent the, uh, in Chinese. There's one of the Asian people uh, right. right now. I should have called you. I, I could say a couple you. things in Chinese. But it was, it was a crazy experience. But they were nice people. They want me to come back. That's the funny part. I said, can you come to one of my comedy shows and just laugh every time I stop talking? You know? You know like, but every time I did a funny movement, I did a funny, like, movement, they started laughing. So they were, you know, they were... Uh, you should have called me. I'm something. fluent in Chinese. The thing Next is, time the Chinese I'll call you. laugh at everything, so you don't really know if it's that you're funny. When they don't understand, they just laugh. Yeah, well, it, it worked. It made me feel good, you good. know. But they, they were Pat, they Pat were Maroon. Happy. He's very well, listen, funny. that's yeah. thinking on the spot, you know. I yeah. mean, so when I call him, I get the uh, beef and cannoli <laughs> special now. The beef and cannoli. The beef yeah. and cannoli yeah. special. And now, uh, by, calling, you with by, calling, by calling it a um, an Italian egg roll, did that insult two cultures? Or I don't know. I just, uh, I didn't know what to say. I wanted to combine yeah, the Italian, the, the cannoli, and the... Uh, well, the pizza bagel is the greatest culinary yeah. yes. cooperation yes. in history. That, that would be the it's blending really of two cultures. It's really not an Italian egg roll, but I just had to no, try to feed them No, it's not. I was trying to think what would be the equivalent of an Italian egg roll. It's actually insulting the cannoli, but they love it. They loved it. That's one good thing. They loved it. John LaRocchia yeah. asked if uh, you had to blend the food because you've never heard that joke before. No. Yeah, well, John's, no. John's slack. I, I, Steve Oliva writes a lot of his material. Oh, well, then. So I think that, we, that well, explains it, you know. Yes. <laughs> Clearly where the guffaws <laughs> come from. Um, How was your week there, I guess. So, so my week, I covered the election as Tom Brokaw. I don't know if you saw oh. the video on my Facebook. Yes, yes, you had a great video. But I went on the air at 9 o'clock as Tom Brokaw. And there were literally no results to report nothing because the results hadn't come in. And it was silly to rush back from dinner. We could have stayed for dessert. I don't know why they go in the air right away. It's, they, it's at ridiculous. At 9 o'clock. There's, no, there's nothing until 9.45 at the earliest. Yeah, you never get, they, they give you the results at midnight. They just want to keep you listening to all the garbage on Does there. Tom Brokaw know you're doing his uh, voice? I, I believe he does. And secondly, is he still alive? He's still alive. Okay. Yes, well, he is. And, uh, but I never let dead people stop me from doing it. Once I do the impression, true. I still do Jack Palance. <laughs> that's true. All your impressions are very good, John. No, Thank they're you. very good. Yes. Excellent. And I see you, you, you got a, a nice page five uh, story. Oh, wait, wait. We oh, got a, I think that's got a John call. calling we, in. We have a phone call. We don't know who it is. Who is it? That yeah, doesn't matter. So, who's on? Uh, no, you're doing this, uh, I, I believe he does. Oh. Who is it? Who is it? Hello? You're on left to saves lives. I think live. They, they butt the Hello. Lives. They might have butt called. Why don't we do what Francesca does? Just push the button yeah. and shut them off. You're Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Who, who was trying to call? Oh, they, who is that? John. It's John in a car in California. Oh. He oh. looks like the he looks like the emperor from he Star Wars. He looks like Wars. the Grim Reaper. He, <laughs> he looks horrible. You right. and your pathetic hey, little hey. Brand of <laughs> right. Right. I can hear you. <laughs> I'm hearing you. John, a, what, why are you oh, in a, why are you in a white Bronco? That's a little weird. All right, yeah, I'm going. I'm being dragged around right now in a white Bronco through L.A. <laughs> Compton, um, tell them to bring you to Compton. In the back of a car. Oh, you got a woman with you in the car, huh? Every time I go away, I'm taken. Listen. Don't flash uh, a peace sign. I might think you're a quick. crip. I'll make this quick because you guys are really on a roll. <laughs> Listen, um, I I worked at. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Unfortunately. I worked at comedy club out here in Valencia three years after 9/11. Do you know when? A place is contaminated, or a building is contaminated, or you bomb so bad they knock it down. Yes. Uh, some you of the Asian they, people did that in the bathroom after Pat's cannolis right. the other day. <laughs> well, the building that I did comedy in 13 years ago, I must have bombed so bad the building's gone. They bombed the building. Right. They took it down. I, I couldn't even find it. There's a big hole there right now. So, John, tell us where you are in California. I'm in Valencia, California, about 40 minutes north of Los Angeles, in the mountains of California. California, fantastic. Now, wasn't there an earthquake in California recently? No, or the other, yesterday? Yeah, a half hour ago, we, we just had one here. Yeah, yeah. But we're doing well. Are we just lost about six viewers now since Sean got on. Are you in Simi Valley area, like uh, that area? I don't know. No, I, I, I take the GPS from the airport and I go to the class, and that's about all I know. Are you driving yourself, or do you have an Uber driver in a headlock I'm actually, right now? I'm actually driving, eating a sandwich, sending a text, and talking to you guys. Oh, all right. <laughs> Who's the woman in the car with you? 
What, what is that? Who's the woman? What makes you think there's a woman in the car? I, I heard a woman. Come on. You have the camera only there's on no yourself. <laughs> We're not stupid. You have the camera only on yourself in case Paul is watching. He's with Salma Hayek. <laughs> All right, listen. Is it have Mary Kennedy? Show. I don't want to. I don't want to bring the show down. You guys are really on a roll. Yeah. Too late. Oh yeah, my chauffeur is Kevin Fogarty. I have a show for Kevin Fogarty. Oh. Oh. Hey, Kevin. Show for like you're like uh, like you're back on the job, huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm that important. Denise. All right, we got to get our first right, guest listen, on, John. We had enough for you, all right? I, if I Skype back in, that means you're really sucking. So have a good show. <laughs> We're all getting fired. Yeah. All right, so uh, thank you, John. It was uh, really great to hear from you. Yeah, that was uh, very that was inspiring terrific. and uplifting. Have all right, fun in uh, California. All right, so we won't do our page five. You want to bring our first yeah, guest? Yeah, let's in? bring our first guest. We'll do the page five after we'll, guest. Oh, get him off here. This is historic. You're this is our first right. guest yeah. ever on mm -hmm. Laughter Saves Lives Live. In the studio guest. In studio guest. In studio guest. This is our first one. Right. First one. And uh, he's, a, a, he's a veteran. He was a, a, an Air Force medic in the Korean conflict. Nice. Uh, um, and he's an executive now for 30 years at a career partner's uh, thing where he, we help find people jobs. Not Korea, Korea. Korea. Right. He not, was in Korea, no, but I now said, he's close oh, to that. <laughs> no, Korea partners. I said Korea. He's going to come but, here and yeah. straighten out that little. He help people conflict. find jobs and, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, let's give a big hand to uh, uh, Art Schill. Here's Art. Hi, Art. Art. Slide in there. Well, he's a little. Uh, can he get up there? He's getting. He's a, he's actually 82, Art, and he does a little stand-up comedy. This is how we right. met, right? Yep. Artie, man. Good Art, to see how you. are you Good 82 you. and you look better at everyone at this table? Yeah, well, you know, I'm actually only 60. Oh, but right. uh, you know, for 82, I look great. You're great. doing right. You for do. 60, I look like hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good to see you, Artie. Uh, I met Artie doing a few comedy shows. Uh, he's very funny uh, for an old guy. <laughs> uh, who's calling now? Who's One on of my phone? fans. Who's on the phone? It's your wife. She doesn't notice. <laughs> You've got to get home. <laughs> really weird. Who's on the phone? Hello? Hello? Mark, do you have a life alert? What is that? Who's this? <laughs> What's up, guys? It's Danny. Who? Danny who? Danny. Oh, Dan, Dan Romano. Romano. Dan Romano. How Dan you doing? Romano. Dan Romano. Dan, Dan Romano. How you Man, doing? The, the, of the vape How you guys doing pizza? over there? We're doing all right, Dan. How's everything? Everything's great. Listen, guys, I just want to give you a quick thing. I, I love what you guys do. I think what you guys do is unbelievable, remarkable. I love the Laugh to Save Lives. I want to sponsor you guys. You guys are phenomenal. I, can't, I just have one suggestion. Yes. Pat Marone, what the hell are you doing with him? Well, you know, they, they gave me a job. You know, it just, uh, you know, they felt bad for me. We needed someone to carry the phone. But, Danny, since you said you're going to sponsor, we're going to give you a little plug. This is Dan yeah. Romano from the, uh, he's at uh, Frankie's, Frankie's East Side Comedy. Oh, Frankie's East Side Pizza, Pizzeria in Farmerdale. Let's get a delicious pizza. And I got to say, I got to admire something. He found a niche, a, a need for the uh, people that uh, don't eat the regular pizza, vegan. And yeah. this man came out with, with, with all sorts of vegan pizzas and and he's killing it. And and yeah. uh, talk about and that's the only people sense. that are going to eat in there is the vegans. Right. <laughs> good yeah. business sense. The Italians don't eat in there, but <clears> now no, no, Frankie's a great guy. Good, does a lot for people. Uh, yeah. We're putting it down for five hundred dollars, Dan. Yes. Thank you so yes, much. Oh my goodness. Goodness. Move over. We got to shift. Good. Everybody move over. Move over a little Can you bit. send three Everybody pies over, over, please? <laughs> but not the vegan. For a small amount. Dan, thank you for calling. I appreciate it. Good guy. Guys, we love you guys. Everything you guys do is phenomenal, and keep it strong, guys. All right, thank, you, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Danny, take care, buddy. Okay. All right, now let's get back to Art here. Without further ado. Great Art. All right, hang great on. Great Art, right. Now, Artie, you, are, uh, uh, you were an Air Force medic in right. the uh, Korean conflict. Uh, right. I called the Korean war. war. My father called was No, it? no, it wasn't a war. They weren't firing real bullets. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> at Air Force, Ed, 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 Air Force Base. Ed, but you had uh, a good story you wanted to tell about that. Well, it was interesting because uh, we had guys like Chuck Yeager who... Broke the sound barrier with the X3 while I was there. I worked the flight line because I was in an emergency medic. Um, the um, guys who became astronauts were all going through their training. It was really interesting. I ran okay. an aid station up at the rocket base, met all, all right. these guys. They were very nice to the medics on the flight line because they knew we were the guys who would scrape them up if they needed it. <laughs> wow. so, so would you be, and to equate that to uh, the, the show MASH, which was obviously about the Korean conflict, were you with the battalion aid station or were you with the no. MASH unit? No, we were at a hospital and then we had units outside. For instance, I was up on the rocket base and I had my own uh, pl place up there that I ran. But uh, we had a big hospital. We took care of 
the Marines at 29 Palms uh, and so forth. And you, said you delivered, and you said you delivered babies, too. Be, because I worked emergencies, I did everything. Yeah, I, I wow. delivered a couple of babies. Nobody will take that away from me. Tell them about I mean, the rocket bay. I used to be in aerospace, so the audience may not be familiar with some of the stuff well, that went on during they that were, they were testing out all the rocket fuels uh, at the base where I was up at the aid station that I ran. And it was really weird. I mean, I still remember all these years later, one of the one of the guys working on the base was down in the pit where they where, where the, they would be shooting off the mm -hmm. rocket. It was a stationary rocket. Right. They just had a test of fuels. And he's standing down and he says, okay, let it go. I said, wait. <laughs> I said, don't you want to get out of there first? He looked at me and says, oh, yeah. <laughs> True story. Good thinking. True story. Well, great, Good Artie. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your and, service. And, and, yes. and tell us a little bit about what you're doing now, name of your company and what you do for... Uh, yeah, Executive Career Partners, um, it's different than what the typical headhunter is. That The headhunter works for the company. In other words, the company calls them up. They need people with a certain background or a certain experience industry experience, job experience, and they would send all the people over there until the company hires one of them, and that way the headhunter gets paid, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. But we work for the individual. In other words, we find where the jobs are, which is not what the headhunter does. They have client companies that call them because they want to fill positions. So we go out looking. We, the people who come to us are either they're out of work, they want to change their careers. They want to make more money. They want to step up, whatever it may be. Now, is so, it, is it a big fee for that? Yeah, we charge them anywhere from six hundred dollars up to fifty-five hundred dollars, depending on a lot of factors. Obviously, fifty-five hundred if we're dealing with people at two hundred fifty thousand so dollars a year. So, be safe above. to say you don't have any dishwashers looking for a job. Uh, yeah. No, as a matter of fact, we do, but we turned them down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but so we we do everything. We write their resumes. We write their letters. We put up a website for them that we create and host. We work with their, on their interviewing, we work with them on their salary negotiating, because most people don't know what they're doing. I was talking to an like executive. Like this crew here, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, can you get us booked on yeah. some comedy right. shows? We'd have a major problem. Yeah, we give you 50. <laughs> a senior comedy. Oh, wait. Well, we can do other things. I mean, we're, look, frankly, we're, we're all unemployed, but if we scrape <laughs> well, together. speak for yourself. <laughs> well, if we scrape together like 30, 40 bucks now, can you, can you, get, us, <laughs> you, do, can you get us a Domino's gig or something? I can, oh, here's, you know? I can make sure your shoes are signed. Here, here's all right. Well, so, I'll so take that would, job, too, at this point. So what you would do is would you uh, coach people on what to, to, what to say and yeah. what not to say in an interview? We take them from the phone interview to the face-to-face -face interview to the salary negotiating right. to the accepted position. The majority of people don't realize how much money they leave on the table mm -hmm. when they finish negotiating. I was talking to a senior executive in the company. He said, look, our company always gives sign-on bonuses, but and sign-on bonuses can run 10 to 25% of salary. Right. He said, but only if the person asks for it. Wow. And 90% of people don't ask for it. Well, Interesting. Probably just, uh, what, what is the biggest... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I said they probably just happen to be getting the job, but uh, I, just, I have a question, maybe this is tying in with yours, mm -hmm. is what, what is something <clears throat> that people should not put on their resume and uh, how would they make themselves more marketable? Yeah, I was going to say the same. Like, what are, what are their biggest mistakes people Well, make? first of all, people are still using two- and three-page historical resumes. They don't work. We're in the Twitter generation today. People don't want to see a lot of information. Give me the facts. If I want more, I'll tell you what I want more. That gets you in the door for the interview. The resume really should not be more than one page. And what okay? is a, and something And instead of being important. historical, it should talk about your accomplishments. What have you done? How have you helped companies make money, save money? How have you saved them time? Right. What have you? Those are the things companies want to know because they want to know you can do it for them. Now, when I hire people, I always look <laughs> at how long they stay at a job. If you got somebody that bounces around, usually I don't really. I'm not that. I lose interest in hiring somebody well, that bounces around. Sometimes it's not their fault see, that they. Yeah, well, I'm around. just saying it's usually. Uh, I, I like to see how many how people last. Yeah. The places. Well, first of all, if they're going to show that on the resume, you're not, they're not even going to get an interview. Right. Mm. So that's why we turn the resume around. We don't want an historical resume. Right. Where you worked isn't important unless you're in sales, bringing a book of business uh -huh. to a competitor. Right, okay? right. What's important is tell me what you can do for me because you've done it before. Would you I, go ahead? I'm sorry. Would you call like a 51 year old uh, newspaper delivery guy? Would that be sales? Yes. I'm just curious. <laughs> yes. It's door sales. It's not door sales. Right. I'm going to put that on my resume. <clears throat> okay. Uh, if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah. But I, I think uh, wow. I think it's great what you do and and we work throughout the country we've been doing this for over 40 years well that's that's another thing i was going to say to you i mean you're 82 years old yeah what keeps your your, your drive to keep going to work and doing that's things right. you must really enjoy doing it Energy. well aside from doing comedy we're going to get into aside that from delivering babies 
It's a, it's a good feeling to have somebody call you and say, thank you. I know you've really affected their lives yeah. and the yeah. lives of their family. So you must have an incredible resume. Right. You know? I don't know about that. <laughs> Believe me, it's better than this crew. Well, he, right he, now. he looks a little like you, Hefner. He does. Yeah. 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 The problem quick, you know, people keep telling me that, and then I realize why they're saying it. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it may not always be a compliment. <laughs> no, no, all right. I was, so, uh, how many babies did you deliver? Only two, but that was enough. All right, I got you. Well, I'm tied enough. with you. I delivered two myself. All you right. delivered two yeah. babies? Yeah, really? I, was a, I was a medic uh, EMT with the city. So oh, that's I, great. I, he worked on an that's ambulance. Great. He delivered yes. them to their houses. Yes, they were lost. <laughs> I was, so. It was a cab. I was actually driving a cab. <laughs> so what? I was on an interview, and, the, and they asked me why I left my last job. And I said, sexual harassment. And they said, you were sexually harassed? I said, no, I wasn't. I'm hoping to do a little better over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you know, you, you, you delivered two babies. I mean, the difference between you and you have to he created a few thousand. That's right. You know? <laughs> that's why... You know, he says, so far as all ISIS is concerned, he said, don't come up here, the virgins are gone now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. So, so get into your comedy. You, uh, you started uh, comedy pretty late in life. I'm, so, I'm sure somebody thought, said you were funny or they, you gave you the idea. What got you into comedy? I always told jokes, and one day I decided that I was going to do some stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. So my daughter said, okay, that sounds fine. And then I called her up and I said, I need a ride. She said, where? I said, I'm going to America's Got Talent. She said, what, are you kidding me? I thought you were going to start as a senior citizen home. <laughs> Something like that. And I said, no, that's where I'm starting. So she drove me over there. I did my 90-second bit. That's all they give you uh -huh. with the other 4,000 people that were there. And uh, they told me to come back this year. They sent me an invitation. Oh, wow. Maybe they said, Aim you know, work on your material. Aim high, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they felt bad for you. Yeah, they did. But the show's uh, been canceled, still, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was only canceled once they found out it was going to so, be on. <laughs> so you, you, you took a comedy class, you told me, and then you yep. got into it. I met you out in the, in the comedy world, and uh, I thought you were pretty funny. And uh, Women think I'm really funny, especially when I'm last, undressed. Yeah, then, uh, then you got involved <laughs> with the... Uh, I'm sorry. Yes, that was funny. Though. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. Uh, so uh, um, almost as good as yours. Now, <laughs> so now that you uh, you got involved with uh, the Project Nine Line Comedy Assault right. Team, super tugboat super. mania recruited you over there. But you had a real great weekend for the veter yeah, Veterans we Day did, weekend. We uh, did Mohegan Sun. Yes. On uh, Friday night, great crowd, great crowd. Uh, what would Project Nine Line basically? teaches veterans things that they haven't thought of before. It could be art classes, uh, music classes, and comedy. We teach them stand-up comedy. Right. So we had a great show up there, and then... Um, I heard you met Jamie Kennedy, the comedian, and he yeah. uh, complimented you on your set, and he yeah. said you were terrific. And then you said something about the fact that he did it because I'm old. Yes, he felt bad. So I uh, just want to tell you, in return, <laughs> you can take your mask off now. Halloween is over. <laughs> All right, you got me back. <laughs> so, so other things that you're and then, doing. By the way, we also went to Nassau Coliseum. Did two shows there on Saturday. Yes, that was a veteran. The whole thing was the Beer Fest down On Saturday, yeah. you did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah two Nassau shows. Coliseum. Now he could say he would be formed at the Coliseum, but in the basement. That's right. They were in the basement. basement. In the basement. Yeah. The, the height of my career. Yeah. Down oh, in the like basement the of the Coliseum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, after America's Got Talent, it's yeah. It's well, all, you know, it's all right. It's all downhill from there. But, but the art for the for the. Uh, I'm sorry, Pat. No, go ahead. Well, the art, for example, and the comedy for the veterans, you know. Music. Music, that's that. therapeutic. Absolutely. That's yeah, the idea yeah, behind yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That's the idea well, behind it. Well, now we're going we're gonna to wrap it up in a little bit. I want to ask you one more thing because uh, we got to get to our next guest. we got to do a few things get to our next guest. Yeah, we guest. got a commercial break Sorry to cut you too. short. But uh, now Scott Baker is running an improv class for you guys at the Project yep. Line Line for the veterans yep. over there. So you take it in you take that class? Absolutely. Oh, he's, he's terrific. The best. He's terrific. Frankie yeah. and I took the class. He's the best. One of the nicest guys around, Scott Baker. Seems to be. You should have fun with him. Uh, so by the way, there's one thing people have been saying. There's a rumor that because people can only see you from the waist up, you're sitting here naked from the waist down. I am. No, why, no, why no, 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 tell I, the no, truth. I don't need to wear no, pants. No, I'm going to tell the I truth. I am, and you did touch me. Yeah, I'm going to tell the right. truth. You did touch me. You're not wearing pants, you guys, but you're all wearing tidy whities so That's <laughs> something. <laughs> that's all the right, then, the Rob. Table. That was uh, great having you thank on the you. show. Thank you. 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 You're an inspiration. You I hope you, you, you need anybody to help you out to the car. You're all right. You're, you're, you're. <laughs> yeah, you have any young women? Who, I mean, at my age, I'm not going to be... You know, one, of our interns, sexual one of our supermodel interns will take you out to the car. Yes. Thanks, Art. Yeah, put your smoking jacket on. They'll think of you. Have if you need an opening act, I'm always available. 
We have to do a quick commercial, and then we have a <laughs> guest. Because you just uh, don't have we, we setting up Consoli for the guest spot? Set up the, yes, set we are setting Consoli. up Consoli. I'm going to send him the text to the, Skype in, um, and then I'm going to read the commercial. The text to, to Skype in, because, you know, he can't hear us. Right. Just tell him that I'm... All right. All right, so let's do the commercial, because this is we we got to pay yeah, our bills. Yeah, I also got to find his number. So I'll do this one as Tony Soprano. How's he, that? He's going to call in. He's probably want, he's going to call in. Yeah, do the first one as Tony, Tony Soprano. Tony Soprano, okay. For all your printing, promotional product, and custom apparel needs, make sure to try FamousVisions.com, a great way to get all your business needs all in one place. Business cards, flyers, brochures, pens, pencils, forms, shirts, and a whole lot more. FamousVisions.com does it all. Make sure to like them on Facebook at FamousVisions.com Marketing, or just go to www.FamousVisions.com on the web. Make sure to mention you heard about them from Laughter Saves Lives. Make sure you mention that. Laughter Saves Lives live. Laughter Saves Lives live. Yes. Capiche? Capiche. Okay. Did, would they send a, uh, a fish in a uh, can brown you wrapper? Can you do Kabrashi the next one? Style? Only uh, Can you do the life hack as uh, Casey Kasem? Sure. Well, yes. no, this this is a serious. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one is we'll a little more serious. Do it in a serious voice. Do a serious thing. Art, 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 listen up to this, Art. Morgan Freeman? Art. I don't want to do it in a voice because this is totally right, this, this is, this is, this is the sad. The man paid for the commercial. The man paid for the commercial. So it's a... Thousands choke to death in their homes every year. It is extremely dangerous for individuals in wheelchairs. LifeVac is a simple rescue suction device designed to clear an obstructed airway in a choking emergency. The founder of the company, Mr. Lee, was visiting a friend's mom in the hospital and was told about a young boy who had died choking on a grape after the Heimlich did not work. The grief of this little boy's mom was heartbreaking and moved Arthur to make sure he kept his daughter safe in a choking emergency. He set out to invent an apparatus that could clear the airway of a choking victim. LifeVac can save thousands of lives a year lost to choking. It has successfully saved seven lives thus far, but then any adverse effects. I think, I think they're up to eight. Didn't I see on Facebook? They're up to, they're eight. Up to eight. And I got to tell you, I, I bought one of these from my house because, mm. you know, I have my, my nephew. Life works. It does. I have my nephew, my daughter. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're I think Mr. Cazzoli's on now. I think he's uh, on. By the way, Life, Life Hack uh, Yank uh, pulled a cannoli out of an Asian tourist uh, yes. throat also, at Pat's place. The other it's day. that powerful. That, yes. that was good. Uh, Thank but, uh, you very I think much. we got Cazzoli on. Is John, he there? He's there. I see him. Is there he is. I see him. He looks a little bit better. There than, he is. He looks a little bit better than Larokia. He does. <laughs> so this is our next guest, John Consoli. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yes we can. Can, can you hear you. us? You're looking good, can John. You hear, see hi, John. John, can you hear us? Now we, now we can. Blink twice hear you. if you can hear us. Take the mute button. Guys, can you they, hear me? Now yeah. we can hear you. Now yeah, we, we can, can hear you. Can you hear us? How about Beautiful. now? He can hear us now. He can hear us now. Can you hear us? I can hear you. All right, very good. So John it's is our, our next guest. He is um, he's a former Marine drill sergeant. He's an author. He's a stand-up comedian. And an all-around good guy. So uh, we want to welcome you to the show, John. Thank you, guys. All good right, John. Hey, John. And uh, John has been doing comedy about five years, and uh, he wrote a book. It was a very good book. I read it. It was uh, um, it was called um, "You Don't Get to Wear That," and uh, it was a story about John and growing up and, and his his life. And John, how'd you come up with that title? How'd I come up with the title? I'm uh, I'm a creative guy. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> The title, is, the title is actually uh, a big part of the book. It's a big reveal. If you read the book, then you figure out what the title means at the end. I don't want to give it away because those books are $10 a piece, and uh, they're going to make some dough here. Daddy's got to eat. Absolutely. Uh, now, John, <laughs> you do put some big steaks on Facebook, so yes, I see you how you eat. And you're scotch. Uh, <laughs> now, John, you grew up, uh, you're local. You're from Wanto, correct? I am. Born and raised in Wanto, Long Island. I live out in beautiful Patchogue by the sea at present. Don't mean to brag. <laughs> Patchogue is beautiful. You're, you're moving on up. So, oh, uh, so as, I as I recall Such from the book, your 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 dad owned a furniture store, and you um, he was sort of involved with the with the mafia. And uh, so, how <clears> how did that affect your life? And how was that being associated with with mobsters? How was that in mobsters and gangsters? My father owned a uh, an upholstery store, and mm. uh, in Wantaw, and uh, which is a good way to wash the money. Mm -hmm. So anyone anyway, knows about, uh, I was, I guess, about uh, 15 years old. My family went into the Federal Witness Protection Program, and we got relocated to Tucson, Arizona, which is, uh, believe me, it's no patch hog, but it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> big, big 
changed. We blended the consolis in Tucson, <laughs> we did. And uh, we were out there for a few months, and my dad, I guess, got to missing the association of being with other men and that pack mentality. So he uh, he joined another association, became a uh, member of the, the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, oh. which, is, uh, which is interesting. Real men, Hells oh, Angels. Yeah. Absolutely. Tough guys. Now, now, John, is, is you know, when you watch the movies and you see the mobsters and they have that great life and they're throwing money around and they're rolling in it and the fast cars and the women, how, how did that uh, work out? Yeah, you know what? That's, that's great in Hollywood, pal. If you want to see something that sums up really well, watch the movie Donnie Brasco mm -hmm. and the scene when Al Pacino's character, Lefty, is trying to break open a parking meter with a ball peen hammer yes. to get yeah. 47 cents out of it. That's more realistic. Mm. Makes sense. Makes sense. So yeah, now, John, I want to... These are guys who, you know, they get portrayed as criminal masterminds, but what I try to portray in my book is that in reality, these are guys who gravitate to that lifestyle because they can't do anything else. Right. You but know, John... it could be, you know, it's either you got to be a home improvement contractor or mob up, one or the other. <laughs> they like they like Tucson, uh, the witness protection. Well, they sent Sammy Gravano out there, right, to Arizona. Yes, yeah. They and sent he, Sammy there. Yeah, they like Tucson, absolutely. They, yeah, you know, I, in Tucson rocks on a Friday night. Yeah, so <laughs> he ended up getting like 19 years, though. I think he just got out or something. Well, Sammy went out there and started. See, these guys, they can't do anything else. Just like my dad. My dad out there went out there and wound up in the Hell's Angels. Sammy went out there and started dealing ecstasy out there, started dealing drugs. So these right. guys, they don't know how to do anything else. Right. It's like why we do stand-up comedy. If you could do anything else, you wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, now, growing up in Wantour, uh, that's, when you, then, that's when you went into the Marines. All right, what was, what was behind your um, going into the Marines, and what do you want to tell us? Um, apparently you had quite a little bit of a career in the Marines, uh, something to be proud of, so tell us a little bit about that. I had a great career in the Marine Corps. And my, about three months into my senior year, the, uh, I got called down to the vice principal's office, Mr. Kellerman, and he said to me, Consoli, we've been watching you since ninth grade, talk to a lot of your teachers, We've reached consensus. We think we've gotten you just about as smart as you're ever going to be. <laughs> so, so let's not waste each other's time here. And at that point, I always wanted to be a Marine. I always, uh, a lot of my buddies from Wanto had enlisted. And uh, so I signed up. I dropped out of high school. I was on Paris Island at 17 years old. And uh, it was a whirlwind. I enlisted at 17. And uh, about 14 months later, I was back on Paris Island as a drill instructor and uh, at the age of 19 years old, and was actually there as a drill instructor before my drill instructors left the island. I'm told that, and I actually was on a website today, there's a, a Paris Island alumni website on Facebook, and I put my story up on there today, and those guys, uh, Paris Island Drill Instructors Association, still validate for me that uh, I'm uh, at 19, the, the youngest Marine Corps in the history, a, a youngest drill instructor in the uh, wow. history of the United States Marine Corps. I'm wow. very proud of that. Oh, very impressive. And by the way, thank you for your service. Thank, well. you for your yes. service. thank you for your service. It was an honor to serve. So I was the, uh, the youngest drill instructor in the Marine Corps. And then 40 years later, I was the oldest comic at an open mic. So I've run the spectrum. <laughs> You've run the spectrum. Can I just say one thing real, real of quick? Of course. When the way you just said that if a comic could do anything, they'd do it. And he just takes a drink. That's why he's so brilliant. He's the greatest wise ass ever. He is like, he drops these things on Facebook. And I, I'm on like a train and I, I'm getting in trouble for laughing. Because he's, I could, he's so quick and brilliant. And then he takes he a drink really and is. boom. He just says it uh, very natural. <laughs> and, uh, so, John, what made, you, what made you want to be a drill instructor? And what made me want to be a drill instructor is I saw a movie when I was a kid. The movie was called The D.I. with Jack Webb. Remember him, the dragnet guy? I did. Yeah. yeah. Santo could probably do a good Jack Webb. But, uh, Just the facts, We're man. not going to ask him <laughs> Exactly. I saw that movie, and I was fascinated by it. I couldn't tell you what, but, you know, for some people, it's a, it's a fireman like Steve or, or you know, a, uh, an astronaut or, or whatever. And, you know, Johnny Santo got into planes. I was just fascinated with... Being a Marine Corps drill instructor is the reason that I got in the Marine Corps. That was my mission. I joined and said, I'm going to stay in here as long as it takes to wear that hat and be able to do that job. And uh, the way things lined up, I, I was just able to, to achieve that uh, a whole lot earlier than, than I expected to. How long did you do it? How long, did he, how long were you in that? Let me ask, you, me ask him. 
<laughs> I was uh, I was I was in that role for for 18 months, and uh, that was the last thing I did in the Marine Corps. I uh, I got out and uh, did four and a half years. Uh, I went in for a four year enlistment, had to extend, sign an extension for six months, so I would have enough time to complete that tour of duty. I did it and moved on. Hey John, could you whip this crew into shape at all? You know, not a chance. No. <laughs> Now, now, John, I Some guy, say, Tim Fisher, said you trained him. He was one of the recruits you trained. Say it again? Tim Some guy, Tim Fisher, said he was one of the recruits that uh, you trained. Tim Fisher was a recruit that uh, he wasn't in my platoon. He was in the training series that I was in. And Tim has become a very good friend of mine. He's a, a retired police officer, had a great career in law enforcement. And, uh, you know, it really blows my mind now, guys. You know, I do... Uh, I do a lot of comedy on the road outside of New York because John Truce won't book me at Governor's. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, none of us. <laughs> oh, Speaking so, of which, uh, um... one, of the, one of the greatest things that happens to me is that probably at half a dozen shows now in the past four or five years that I've been on the road, a former recruit of mine like Tim Fisher will show up in the audience to surprise me. Oh, that's so awesome. Tim's been at, at two or three shows and... I have uh, another brother, Tony Pagan, who comes out to see me and seeing these guys and having them show up and uh, nice. seeing just marveling over the amazing lives that they've lived and having them tell me that I had a little bit of influence over that is uh, is just this. There's no, no way to put it into words. Nice. We all should have met you 30 really? years John, ago. Things um, would have been different for us. John. I got to say, though, your, your, your desire to be a, a drill sergeant obviously talks about your mindset and, and that uh, you... you you wanted something and you and you went and got it. Uh, you know, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you know what? It's it's uh, very goal oriented. That's one of the things that came out of you know our childhood, right? We're all guys of a a certain generation where there was no entitlement mm. and nobody nobody told you you could be whatever you want to be. They told you if you want something, you got to work for it, right? So there was no trophy for participation. We we, we were, there was a different mindset where you you set a goal and you had to put in the work for it. And uh, you got your knees scraped and, and, and did, you know, whatever it took. And that's all of you guys are like that. I know you all, you're all my friends and you all have your own stories to tell. And that's the thing that, that even when people talk to me about comedy, right? I've been doing, I, I really cringe when people go, hey, John, how long have you been doing comedy? And I go, five years. And they go, well, that's not really a long time. And, but it's not how many years you do something. It's what you do in that time. That's right. Like being a drill yes. instructor. I have guys tell me there's no way in 18 months. How do you do that? You can't even make sergeant in 18 months. Right. Yeah, you can. And then people tell me, well, you know, we can't close you. You can't be a headliner because you've only been doing this five years. But do you remember what I told you? If in a week one of us gets up on stage 30 times in that week and another guy gets up two times in that week, then who's making most use of the time? Right. And then, right. then does it matter? You know, I could sit in a garage for 12 years. I'm never going to be a Mercedes Benz. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> Do you remember what I told you when we first met? Remember what I said? Yeah, I remember sitting in a car with you, and you looked at me and said, I saw what you did tonight, and you're going to be a headliner in five years. And I said, yeah, that shit doesn't happen. And and I don't know what I don't know what a headliner is. I'm, I close shows now. A headliner, I think, is if they put your name up like a Vic DiBattetto, and when your name goes up, people come to see you, then you're a headliner. Yep. I'm a guy who can do 60 minutes and go last, yeah. like you're, all you guys. You're good, enough, John, to be, you're good no. enough to be a headliner in my book. John, I got, I got two questions for you. One, um, I understand uh, these are the last two questions, and we'll let you go. Um, you're known as the disaster comic. Anything you want to explain about that? And what was the best thing that happened to you coming out of Wantor? So uh, two quick things. I, uh, I just got the light. That's what Frankie said. It was two quick things and you're out of here. So I'm working on the <laughs> light. You got, you got time. That you, got time. you didn't get the light. You got time. Yeah. That guys have been calling me the disaster comic because in the past two months, I was in Las Vegas doing comedy at the Laugh Factory when that horrible shooting happened. And I don't want to make a joke out of that because it's an atrocity. But I happened to be there that weekend. I left there and went to Napa, California. And the friggin' place went on fire. And then I went to Tampa to do a fundraiser, and the place flooded. So it, it, I was very powered. I was afraid to take a leak for two weeks. I didn't want to. Hey, John, I was going to hire you for my uh, family barbecue, but I think I'm going to hold off on that, if you don't mind. Hey, you know, John, just hey, John you're your mother-in-law's birthday, Steve. Everything will work out fine. <laughs> hey, John. John, congratulations on your engagement and your uh, Yeah, I wanted to. 
Your future wife says John Consoli, 2020. So I guess she wants you to run. Well, I gotta, I gotta tell you this. The last thing, the best thing that happened in uh, in Wanto, as you guys just said, I'm getting married January the second to my high school sweetheart Susan, who was uh, literally when we were kids, she was the girl down the block. We both lived on. I lived on Nelson and Beach. She lived two blocks away on the corner of Nelson and Willow Street. And I fell in love with her when I was like 12 years old. And then life happened, and we went in different directions, and both got married to different people and raised six wonderful children she's got three boys and i got two boys and a girl and uh almost a guys like the brady almost a brady, brady we're, 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 we're back together and we're getting married in january none of you guys are invited good <laughs> uh, john as i said i read your book it was a great book you don't get to wear that if anybody wants to buy the book uh how can they get a hold of it and tell us about any upcoming shows you have so they can get that book they can get that book. You don't get to wear that on Amazon.com. It's available in soft cover and in Kindle. And uh, November the 29th, I'm going to be doing one of my favorite things in comedy. I'm going to be at uh, Visani's in Port Charlotte, Florida, opening for my very dear friend Al Romas. Also, back to Wanto, and I'll leave you guys with this. Al and I met in the fourth grade at Sunrise Park Elementary School in Wanto, New York, and we battled for who was the funniest kid in class. And again, didn't see Al. Al moved out of town. He moved all the way to Massapequa. And uh, I didn't see Al for 35 years. I started doing stand-up comedy. I found him on the internet. I went to meet him in Atlantic City, where he was working at the comedy stop at the Tropicana. And we reconnected like we never missed a beat. And I'm really, really happy. Al wrote the forward for my book. He consulted on my one-man show, and he's brought me all around the country with him as his opening act for about four years now. And one of my one of my best friends in the world, one of the funniest comedians. Look up Al Romas, folks, on YouTube, and he's on Serious Raw Dog, and he, he's got a book out called How About a Hand for the Last Guy about his <laughs> 30 years in comedy. This guy is a comedian's comedian. He's worked with everybody, and I feel so fortunate that uh, in November, on, on the 29th, we're doing a four-night run in Florida at Bassani's, and uh, it's, it's a two-man show, and we just, we have a ball, and, and the crowd seems to love it. So, he actually, uh, he actually, gave it a thumbs up. Yep, he just texted us to remind him to plug Bassani, so. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it come in, I wrote a note to, to him, and we made sure we got that covered. So yeah, man. So thanks, guys. It's yeah, great having you, John. Good, good stories, John. Good stories. Great having you, John. We'll have you back. Appreciate it. I don't think John wants to. We come should back, have him in we'll studio. <laughs> yeah, I think he should be. He would be good in studio. I so, would be, but I can't drink in the studio. Yes, you can. Yes, yes you can. can. No, you can. And you don't have to wear pants. We'll get you a little steak <laughs> and our beef. Whatever you want. Oz, no worry. No Odd was loaded. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. Thank you. All right, John. I got to tell you, I read the book. Uh, it's, it is. It is a very good book. It's interesting. You know, uh, the stuff his father got them into and and the stuff they had to get out of. Uh, so I recommend it. It's an excellent book. Oh, we got to nice. call Joe Maffa. Well, give a call there, Frankie. I don't have his number. I have his he number. Got his number right here. We got a, no, no. We got a whole set. Should we, huh? should we have him I call got the in? number here. Look. I'm not the call guy. Yes, you are. I'm the social media guy. No. That's the call guy. No, no. He's supposed to call in. He may have missed his spot. He may have. What's what's the? No, uh, what's his number? Let's what's, just what's prank the call him. number? Let's send him some Frankie's pizza. You got the thing. You can hook it up. Yeah, remember the last time it didn't work? It worked. Try it. You just put it, put it in a thing. <laughs> Tell John to put Martha to put his hearing aid on. He gave me his home and mobile, the same phone number. Yeah. All right. So while Frankie's trying to do that, we could plug another show. Uh, and, uh, Mom's Gone Wild. Uh, December woo! 1st. December 1st. We'll plug that show. For Angela's house. Angela's house. Could you put the picture up? Yeah, picture yep. of Angela's house. And everybody can see all the Laughter Saves Live show, uh, shows coming up on LaughterSavesLives.org under events. You, there's tickets and information. There's the flyer. And all the information is on... Um, on the website, laughtersaveslives.org. You should be visiting that website every day. You want to do another page five while we're waiting for Mom? Yes. Another there's one a, it was a big story. Yes, go there ahead. Was, Let's hear it. I don't know if it's too dirty for the show. Oh, we didn't do that page five. This is the one we wanted to do. Oh, let's do this show. one. This one is better. It can yeah. be dirty. Do the one you told political. me about. It was good. Right. Do the one you did. That was. I like that one. Which one? The one about the... The prostitute? Yes. Yeah. So a prostitute apparently um, had a... Uh, I hate to say John because that's my name, but it was a, uh, the customer. The customer. The customer. And... Uh, he was doing something to her, and he wasn't doing it well enough or mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. So she shot him twice in the head. So he literally got shot in the head while giving head. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, wow. And uh, he didn't she, die. He didn't did she die. get paid? Did she get paid first? I don't know. Because that's. Yeah, that's well, she took his wallet. Idea. She took so his huh. job was concerned about him, and they found him in the hotel room with the with the the Oof. you know. And that, we uh, have no answer from Mafa. And what, no what, what happened from to what happened so to anybody else? Uh, what happened to the in? prostitute? You know, I I don't remember. I didn't read the whole story. Oh, I probably okay. should have. We, we'll have that some, next week. You, you want to find out what happened to the prostitute? Do the next week. We got another page file. Do the other page file. I actually heard story. she's a. Uh, yeah. She's on Twitter accusing Steve, Harvey Steve. Weinstein and uh, several others. You, you can do this one. You, you, you oh. want to do the one? No, I don't do want to do it. All right, folks. One. Let me Let's paraphrase this, this one. one. What happened? Uh, 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 paramedic sent this to us. As a paramedic, uh, they had a domestic uh, situation to respond to. So uh, it was 2 in the afternoon, and the family was sitting down to eat their turkey. It was Thanksgiving. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. Okay, Could folks. that be Joe Moffat? Well, we'll no, we'll back. Keep, keep with this. Stay on this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it turns out they had an argument over who should carve the turkey, and the whole family. Oh, afternoon, and the family was sitting down to eat their turkey. It was Thanksgiving. Uh-oh. 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 Okay, could that be Joe Moffat? Hold on. Oh, somebody put the volume on. Well, it turns out they had an argument over who should carve the turkey. Turkey and, uh, oh, t- turn your radio turn down. Your radio oh, I was wasn't saying that. Oh, that was Can turn you please your radio turn down, your folks? radio down? Who's this chooch on the phone now? It might be Mafa. Oh. Hello? Hello, it's uh, Joe Mafa. Oh, oh right. Right here. Speaking of chooches. <laughs> what the he has his radio. I, I, he has I told Joe, turn your radio I spoke to him three down. times and you guys have his number. I, I don't know what's going on, but finish that story. We you don't want to be on the show. We don't want to be on the show. Well, you know, you're John, you don't have to micromanage from Nice from time. This guy's such a control freak. He doesn't even let us finish the page five story. Go ahead, Steve. This is Steve's right. time. Oh, you know why? Because Butch told him to call in. And I guess yeah, Butch, yeah, okay. Pay it's your all Uber, Butch's fault. Yeah, Butch pay your Uber wine. driver and laugh to save lives stickers and uh, let us finish this story. All right, so they, they got into it. The family had a huge argument in front of the uh, the. Uh, EMS workers. Fists were flying between the men. The women are screaming at the men to stop it. Vegetables, asparagus flying all over the place. Woman takes a purse, grabs uh, pepper spray and proceeds to pepper spray the men who are fighting. Uh, And then someone else, apparently everyone here had pepper spray. Uh, and they all started pepper spraying each other. Nobody had salt spray. No, nah, nobody had, listen, it's Thanksgiving. They should have sprayed gravy at each other. You should but gravy you spray. Should try next yeah. time when you read that, put your glasses on. You look like one of the Chinese people. Right. We do, do that ate the egg ate the cannolis today. Excuse me, I'm squinting because... Uh, he has... Um, <laughs> this is called the comedic effect. Let me try this now. Three for ten at CVS, by the way. So uh, the police came, and uh, everyone had pepper spray in their oh, eyes. Dan- dinner was ruined. Dinner was ruined. And uh, everyone uh, left uh, leaving. I suspect so, the incident took less time than this story. <laughs> well, I think it comes down to nobody wants to carve a turkey, apparently, because that was, which is why you should order Boston I, now Market. I will tell you, comes carved already. I like, I like the better when he didn't you know, say much. When I, um, mm, I remember it was funny. when I, I was, uh, I was uh, working for uh, EMS at the time. It was Thanksgiving. Yeah. And I get a call for a family dispute. Right. And the father stabbed the son because the son took the, the second turkey leg. Listen, when there's food involved, people uh, get angry, you know, uh, like at Pat's uh, cannoli debacle with the Asian people, you right. know. Um, but they left. Do we still people have John? We still, we we still have John? Oh, he's gone. Yeah, I feel like I'm at home. I'm just sitting here. Nobody's paying attention to me. This well, because we, we, you called in the middle of the yeah. segment. You should, hey, we have better. You should know better. As a producer, as a guy that runs this, you should know not to interrupt us. I was an excellent us. interview with John Consoli. You guys hit that out of the park. Thank you. For, That's because it was, I read it was the book. Beautiful. Until Artie's hired, January, February for Left to Save Live show. Okay. He's Artie, in the, other, he's in the other room. Right now. January, he, February. He didn't say what year. He just said January, he's, February. He's in the other room sleeping now. I think now. it's January 24th. And just do one more thing. Tell Patty's off that show now. Okay. okay. We'll let him know. All right. That's fine. <laughs> so, Pat, you're but off uh, Artie's show. taking right. a nap. He didn't I don't know what happened to Mafa. I don't know what happened. He wasn't feeling well, so we... Excellent job. We just used a life hack three times on Art before the show ended tonight. We realized he wasn't choking. I was going to say... Then we tried famous vision on him, too. In the middle of the interview. He's texting us. John was texting us. Make sure you cover left. This, the mom's gone wild. Yeah. We did that. We read the commercials. We did the Andrew's He's such house. a control freak. He is. And, and he doesn't trust us. You and, and I are like then he pilot make, and co-pilot yeah, of the show. And then he makes us like nervous of over. He, he, he ruined the whole show. Right. Ruined the whole show. Whole show. Hey, whole show. John. John. Great job. John, don't Absolutely. you have a building to, uh, to collapse with uh, a few minutes? No, I'm done. I'm done out here. What time is oh, it? Yeah? Three okay. hours earlier. So. Where are you now? I'm I'm in the hotel room. 
Where and the hotel is where? The hotel's in Valencia. Valencia, California. I love As you can tell, listen, John, by our silence, here. no one here knows where Valencia job, is. All right. Why, this is fun. Great job. We're all fired. Thank you. We got five minutes. Get the hell out of here. I thought he was going to fire us on the... He's probably going to fire me. I'm I'm the next guy on the list. You know what? I can get you on another show. Don't worry. All right, good. That's all right. John and Steve off to Texas this weekend. But I'll tell you, you, isn't... Are you going to Texas this weekend? Oh, yeah. I'm going to Texas... uh, Saturday. Oh, I have some friends in Texas. John and I are going to do a, a show Saturday night. Why didn't you mention Where? that before? You didn't ask. Butch, Butch. We asked, just... how was your week? Well, I guess that'll be for next week. Well, You're I right. Went to the I was talking about the, but, uh, the expensive prices. Uh, but John really big. doesn't trust us running a show. Well, yeah. well, 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 John and well, I are going to do a show for uh, um, a lot of, actually, uh, first responders. Uh, hazmat, EMS, fire, police uh, in Texas uh, on Saturday night. And, um, yeah, we're very excited. It's so a Let the Saves Live show, right? Yes, it is. Well, why didn't you, well, yeah. we would talk about the show. Why didn't you bring that up? But thank God Butch reminded him. Right. Thank you, this. Butch. He's too busy trying to be funny Thanks, this Butch. Team, yeah. You know, it's well, not I'm the third wheel. I thought I'm only supposed to spoke <laughs> if, if I have something relatively funny. And in this crew, I usually do with this competition. Yeah, but, but if you have a show for Let the Saves Live, you can mention that. Oh, well, we have right. a lot yeah, of guests. Totally. You know, there, there'd be no reason not to plug the Laugh to Saves Live show on the Laugh to Saves Live radio and television. Exactly. Hey, why don't you take it easy on Steve? He came hey, here take on, it easy on the came, kid. He, came, All right. he showed up on time today. Take it easy. Thanks very much. All right, Pat. take it easy on the kid. All right, okay. Yeah, so right, do we have any right. more commercials to tell or anything? No, we're at it. We did our commercials. We All can right. talk about um, whatever you guys want we to talk about. But I like to talk style. about the... Uh, I think the Katsoli uh, interview was terrific. I think he I did, did a great I mean, job. Um, I you. thought Art was okay. He's uh, not as interested in it as he said he was. But, we, had uh, to, you know. uh, we had to zap him once in a while to keep him awake. <laughs> i got to tell you, this show is the best show that we've ever done. It was yeah. absolutely terrific. Bring on Art here while we close Real it out news. in a little while. Art, you want to sit Come on, Art, come back in. Bow, Art. I'm not yeah, getting yeah, up. Come yeah, on yeah, in. No, 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 just take a bow in front of the camera. Yeah, we you don't all, need to bow. Come yeah, on in. Sit down with us. Can you overdress for a interview? Well, he's not mic'd up, so we can't hear him. I'll answer it, but, I mean, can you overdress for an interview? Yeah, of course you can. You can, yeah, right? You guys have yeah. okay. His answer was yes, you, you can. Yeah, well, I know because Pat wore his chef outfit uh, a while back to a Taco Bell interview, and I thought that, <laughs> well, I thought that was a little subliminal. Much. Wouldn't that be subliminal? Like you're hiring me. It's, it's Taco Bell, yes. I'm a chef. Listen, you know, I can help you guys out because at my age, I've learned a lot of things. For instance, you probably money? forgot a lot of things, no, too. Money? I'd like to borrow Wait, money. He's not, can you lend me 10 bucks you, before you they leave? Can't right? hear, they no. can't hear you. Speaking that, he's speaking well, that you're well, a war veteran. Do you, do you know how the Italians lost the war? How? They sent the guy out for, uh, for shells. He came back with macaroni. <laughs> oh. That was good, Pat. That was good. But hey, uh, Art, no, Art. No, they can't hear him. They can't hear him. borrow money, okay? Borrow from your testament. They don't expect you to pay it back. There you go. We're wrapping up. You got that? We're wrapping up. All right, everybody. uh, Next week. You'll find out what happens to the prostitute. Same channel. There's Artie over there, that old guy. He's in the corner. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Thanks to everybody that tuned in on. Thanks to everyone that tuned in on social media. And uh, we'll see you next week. Well, we're not here. That's the only place they can turn in is on social media. You'll find out about the prostitute next week. We have to stay live in Texas Saturday night, the 19th. First, he didn't say it, now he's not, you know. Go to the website. The 18th, excuse me. Go to the website, labthesavesslives.org. That'll have the correct date. That's correct. And Butchie, good night, Butchie. Yeah, thanks, Butch. Thanks, John, for, uh... We're getting good at this. Yeah, it's all coming together. Time for the song. No, we just have to... No, we're at five. Yeah.